Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and I've had some viewers get a hold of me about how to repair their yoke. This one does not look bad. This one I don't even know if I'd worry about but it does have a little dimple right here. We're going to fix that with a welder. We're just going to weld in a little bit on that low spot then I'm going to use this air grinder and I'm going to grind it flush. Now this one, not much I can do with this. Yeah, let's turn it this way. Not much I can do with this. That would be a lot of welding. Some of these yokes aren't that expensive. Um, this style here is around 25 bucks. But now all you're getting is just this yoke and this arm because it's welded on. This and the spring and your bracket, you do not get that. This one has a tail on it. What that does is some of your machines have a position that says park. Then you'll have a piece of pipe you'll have what I call this little ball and another piece of pipe and a snap ring. This little ball, when you put your machine in part, your chain case will slide over to this position and when you let your clutch out, this will swing in and this hits up against your clutch disc and locks up your drivetrain. Now if your older machines, which this came off of, has a position that says roll, you won't have the little ball. You'll just have a piece of pipe on here and a snap ring that spins, but it misses the clutch disc. So when you put it in your roll position, you'll be able to move it around your garage. Now these parts put these on here where they belong, came off my 33 inch machine because I thought it would be nice to be able to put it in neutral position and be able to roll it around and move it. Well without these on here and I'm mowing in the yard and I put my machine in park and get off, it tends to roll down the hill. <laughs> so. Um, you might want to leave these on but what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to fix these that are in really bad shape or any yoke and we're going to fix it with this now yes I know this is cardboard I had to draw a template or a pattern I'm going to make these out of steel if anyone's interested. Uh, the ones with the pin or tail on it, these will have to be a little shorter because where this is welded up in here is in the way. I patterned this to fit on this yoke. Now how I can hold this so you can see it. <clears throat> what you'll do when if you decide to buy one of these, I'm going to try to figure out, I'm hoping to sell these for about 10 bucks, and they'll be painted. You will lay it on your yoke and line it up with this slot that's still left the best you can, and you'll put a couple clamps on it. Then you will drill through these holes and match drill your yoke and then you can either leave this on the outside or you can slip it up in here on the inside and it will come with two bolts lock washers and nuts to bolt it on with and that will repair something that looks this bad this machine when I tore it apart had a hard time getting around the yard in second and third gear so that is something I am thinking about building and selling. 
I'm trying to sell them as cheap as I can because, well, I'm not trying to make money. I'm trying to help you guys out. I have the facility and the means to do it. So I'm just going to cut up some flat stock. I'm going to buy inch and an eighth wide by one eighth of an inch thick steel flat stock. So all I'll have to do is cut this notch in it and it'll be done. Cut it to length and drill two holes. That shouldn't be all that hard. We'll see what happens. Now we're going to, like I said, we're going to fix this little divot in this yoke. I'm going to put a little weld in there just to fill that in. And I have a my air pneumatic uh, die grinder and we're going to grind that off. So let's see how hard it's going to be to fix that, shall we? I've got the welder set for what I'm going to be doing as far as the wire size I'm using and the gauge of steel I'm going to be welding. Get my glove, you know, safety, <laughs> safety first. <laughs> yeah, right. And we'll weld this up. I hope that don't get too bright. With all that paint on here, I hope I get a decent ground. I guess we'll find out in a second. You don't want to put too much on because now you got to grind it off. And let's see what we can do to get that off of there. Now this is a little noisy, so if you have earbuds in, I suggest you take them out. <laughs> And that is it. Now if you have more than one little dent or divot or whatever you want to call it in here, you just have to fill it in a little tack here and there. You don't want to put too much because like I said, <laughs> you got to grind that back off. Um, but that makes a very nice repair and very fast. Things a little dirtier than I thought it was. But that's all there is to it. Now I'll throw some paint on there and you'll probably never know that that's been repaired. Now if you have to and you don't have a die grinder and you don't want to buy one, uh, you can use a plain file. But I would imagine if you have a That made it even a little better. If you got a welder, I would imagine you probably have a grinder. Uh, these are nice because you can get into a very thin, tight spot inside that yoke. <clears throat> and boy, that was about it. If you have any questions or comments, 
leave them on the description box below the video or send me an email. My email is jimsfixitshop at gmail.com. I get hundreds of emails. So just send me one and I answer them daily. I don't let them bunch up. That's even a bigger problem. But if you would be interested in a repair kit for your yoke, let me know. Um, like I said, some of these yokes are not that expensive new if you can find them. Uh, most all of these parts are relatively available through a number of places that sell parts for snappers. I usually deal with parts tree myself and I think the one that's for my 2012 snapper that's standing up over here that I have done I looked that one up this morning and it was like $17. Might be simpler just to order a new yoke. Now Parts Tree does have a $7.95 shipping rate and that is pretty much no matter how much stuff you buy or how little it's $7.95. So I guess that's about it. Now, speaking of emails, I had a little issue with one of my emails. I have so many, I do not sit down and type my answers. I am not that fast typing. Like you see some of these kids, man, they're just going, no, no, I'm going like this. So I dictate to my phone. Well, my phone doesn't always type what I say. So I answered one guy. He sent me an email and said, I hate to bother you, but, and emails are never a bother. That's why I'm doing this, is to help people. If you send me an email or a comment, I am going to answer it. Unless I'm sick or dead, you will get an answer. If you don't get an answer from me, within five days, send it again, because I may have deleted it by accident. I've been known to do that a few times. So, when I was dictating this answer to this man, uh, my phone wrote, uh, it wrote my answer, and then when I said period Jim, it wrote period S-H-I-T. So he thought I was upset that he bothered me. <laughs> so I had to write him back and explain what happened. So if you get an email from me and some of the words aren't what they should be, just kind of read between the lines or if you can't figure it out, email me back and say, hey, I think you better. I try to proofread all my emails, but I'm getting 50 to 60 a day, and it slows me down a lot to sit there and read every one that I write. So I kind of skim through them and say, oh, that looks good, and I push send, and you know how that goes. So if you get some email from me that has a bad word in it, <clears throat> I did not mean to write that. <laughs> that was my phone. <laughs> so <clears throat> um, getting back to these yokes, if you are interested in a repair kit, uh, let me know. Like I said, I, I'm hoping to get around 7 to $10. And then you got a 7 or $8 shipping fee. Um, it might be as cheap to buy a brand new yoke. But if yours is one of the more expensive ones that are like 25 or 30 bucks, you might want to go the repair kit. Totally up to you. I am not trying to make a profit off of this stuff that I sell. I'm just trying to save you guys money. So... With that being said, work safe, have fun, 
don't forget to subscribe because I need your help on that. I need subscribers to keep this channel going. Um, that's it. <laughs> no, no preaching. <laughs> and um, we'll talk to you soon. So long. Hi guys, I'm back. You didn't think you were going to get rid of me that easy. I do have a confession to make on these repairs. This idea came to me from a viewer and I believe his idea was he put a piece of flat stock like this from this edge over to here to cover up the bad spots and he bolted it in with bolts. So this is a spin-off from his idea. And I thought some of these yokes, the reverse area gets ate up or in bad shape also. So I thought I would go all the way across with a new piece of steel. So that credit goes to the viewer that sent that to me. Now I had another viewer that fixed his yoke and sent me a picture of it that just had a war spot in one gear. It was over in this area, so it was probably uh, either third or fourth gear. And what he did was on the back side, he slipped through a hose clamp and tightened it down tight enough where it pulled around this corner and across the back and down the front tight enough where it conformed to this flat piece of steel and it was out of the way when you shifted it didn't get caught on it. That is an extremely simple repair and what is a hose clamp? 50 cents? Now granted it'd be pretty hard if you had a big area like this to try and clamp that probably wouldn't work. But this is something you could easily make yourself. You go down to Menards, uh, Home Depot, I'm not sure about Lowe's, but they all sell flat stock. You could buy a short piece, probably, what is that, two and a half, three inches long, drill a couple holes, and just bolt it in in the area that's worn out. You don't have to cut this shape in there. If it's something you want to do on your own, or if it's something you want me to do, that's fine. Like I said, I'm here to help you keep these machines on your grass, either cutting it or picking up stuff like I do with mine. Uh, next Saturday up here in Michigan, it's supposed to be maybe in the upper 30s to maybe even 40. I may drag out my machine and run around and suck up all the garbage on the ground, which is sticks, twigs, acorns, pine cones, uh, anything smaller than my thumb, I don't pick up. My machine chews it and bags it. Abuse or <laughs> typical use? I don't know. Let me know. But that's it. I just want to let you know and the man that sent me that idea that that was not my original brainstorm. I get a lot of ideas from viewers that I pass along. And I always say if it was an idea I come up with, like the spreader bars that I sell, or if it's an idea that a viewer comes up with, that's what I put it out as. So, talk to you later. Keep on snapping, and work safe. So long.